Welcome to the part 2 of Bayesian optimization discussion. In this part, we are going to do some hands-on of Bayesian optimization using Colab. So in this hands-on, I am going to use the Bayesian optimization module developed by Thomas Huiskens. His Bayesian optimization module is available in this GitHub repository. You can download the GitHub repository from this, this link and that is what I am doing here. So let's go back to my Colab notebook. The first thing what we will do, we will import these Python modules, the pandas numpy matplot library sklearn from the sklearn we are going to import the model selection and the train tra train state split gaussian process cross validation score and svm so let us run this to initialize from the thomas huiskens Bayesian optimization module in that module you will find there is in the Python there is a particular function called gp.py I already downloaded it in my local and I'm going to upload this gp.py code Python code in my colab this colab environment so I'm going to run this and it gives me to upload the file the opportunity to upload the file it is uploading the file it says it's done so now this gp.py is going to be in my is it in my, it's in my environment Next, I am again going to use the German credit data set for this hands-on. This is a very simple data set and it is good for learning first time. Once you get used to with implementing different module using Bayesian optimization, so definitely you can try to implement Bayesian optimization for larger data set like MNIST fashion data set or any other data set even larger than this so let me run this and it will import give me the opportunity to import the data the German credit data set here is the German credit data set it's importing it's done first let us look into the shape of the data it has thousand samples 21 variables of which we know in our previous hands-on we have seen one variable is the good and bad is target variable and the rest of the 20 variables are the uh, attribute variables or feature variable or predictor variables we have seen this data set in our logistic regression hands-on here is first seven rows of the data like you know first 20 variables are different attributes like status of existing checking account duration in month credit history purpose all these things at the end you have the target variable good and bad one means good and two means it's a bad loan first i'm going to do some feature engineering so duration in month credit amount and installment rate i'm going to put a square terms for these variables you can put as many feature variable as you want 
nobody is going to stop you in this exercise i am going to consider only the numeric variables in the day in these data set like duration in month credit amount then installment rate then present residence scenes then age these are the numeric variable that we have in this data set and i'm going to use only the numeric attributes in the in this analysis in we can always incorporate the categorical contribute but we have to convert them into dummy variables like zero ones and then for that will take longer data processing time so for that i am going to avoid that our main objective is here to understand the Bayesian optimization. So I'm going to just consider this pneumatic variable and the target variable and create a X matrix with the pneumatic variable and the Y matrix with the target variable. So let me run it. So here are the feature variables. These are the feature variables. You can, if you want, you can drop them or add them always. And this is the target variable then I'm going to use the train test fleet and from the train for the data standard machine learning technique next I'm going to run a SVM classification with Bayesian optimization the first step in order to run the Bayesian optimization we have to define a loss function in the SVM what we have is in the is support vector classification we have two hyperparameters that we need to implement one is uh, cost function c another is the comma function so this loss function um, c is and gamma is will be read c and gamma and then we are reading this as a 10 to the power c and for cost and 10 to the power gamma as the gamma function why we are reading it as a 10 to the power because in the optimization c is c and gamma will be unrestricted but we do know within the support vector classification the cost and gamma is always a positive number so we have to make it a positive so we have taken 10 to the power and that is the reason so once we fit the model then from the model we just fit the model with x equal to x train y equal to y train we take the scoring equal to accuracy we use a threefold cross validation and compute the take the average of these threefold cross validation and return that so this is the and defining the loss function is very important remember that our objective being bayesian optimization we always try to maximize the objective function here we are considering accuracy in case if you are running a regression model you have to run you have to take negative of the mean square error not the actual mean square error if you want to do a Bayesian optimization on the regression kind of problem now we have to refine the boundary the boundary in which the Bayesian optimization will search for the cost and the gamma parameter so this is the boundary that we have defined that we are saying that okay you search the cost c between minus 10 and 10 and the gamma between minus 10 and 10 so we give a rectangle area and the search will be within that area this is very important function if you don't give this np random seed um, then the, your result will not be reproducible every time you will run the Bayesian optimization it will give you some different answer because you remember that in each sequence every time it run through an iteration what happens is draw a most probable uh, sample where it can have a maximum accuracy most probable value for the c and gamma are the most valuable probable value for the hyperparameters so you have you must give that if you give this then your results will be reproducible by the others also also when you run the same optimization second time 
you will get the same result again so this is a very important step and then you run the Bayesian optimization n eaters is the starting how many iterations you want to give sample loss is the this loss function what is what is the objective function effectively that is the uh, that you want to maximize and then bound is the in which bound it will goes through and what is the pre sample in this 25 iteration first before the zero eighth iteration will have start with 10 pre sample and then it will go for 25 sequential iteration and then it will return all the xp values all that has been explored and then the yp their corresponding accuracy and give them xp hat at which the it is maximum so that is the entire so i we can say it is a define the boundary and run the bayesian optimization session on SVM all right so now we are going to define the Bayesian optimization on support vector machine so let us run this so okay we have found the results the value of C is 2.67 and the gamma is 4.97 so at the optimal choice of xp hat and the gamma hat at the C and the gamma we fit the model and we compute the in sample accuracy score and the out of sample accuracy score So in sample accuracy score turns out to be 100 and the out of sample accuracy score turns out to be 66.33. So clearly a, the suffered vector machine is doing little bit of overestimation and that is why there is a huge gap between the in sample accuracy is 100 clearly indicates that there is a possibility not possibility definitely it is doing some overestimation next we move on to neural network classification with Bayesian optimization so for that what we are doing from the scikit-learn neural network we are import MLP classifier which MLP classifier you have to just give the hidden layer size 3 I have given a you know uh, ad hoc choice uh, with a maximum iteration of 100 activation function as ReLU solver as stochastic gradient descent and I gave a random state equal to 1 so that every time you run you get the same result or the results are reproducible once we define this we fit the model with x train and y train and then we score the in sample score out sample curve and the cross validation score threefold cross validation score all right so it ran and it ran very fast and in sample score is 71 percent whereas out of the sample is 66.33 and these are the cross validation three fold cross validation score is giving three different values so this is an ad hoc choices of hidden layers this we have taken a four layers and um, each layer has different different number of you know um, nodes now we want to define we want to figure out what is the optimal number of nodes in each of these layers so what we did we define again we want to run a Bayesian optimization we first thing we are going to do we are going to define a loss function in the loss function the first thing we have to do we have to take the parameters so now the number of nodes in the hidden layers are my nodes so this is h1 h2 h3 and h4 but remember that this number of nodes cannot be 3.5 or 2.9 it has to be an integer 
so every time the parameter comes in it has to be read as an integer so it takes the integer values it passes it through the h1 h2 a3 h4 maximum iteration i'm keeping it as a 500 activation function is ReLU solver as sgd random state i'm keeping it as a one and then it returns the threefold accuracy from the threefold cross validation score so once i define the loss function then what we are going to do the same way we are going to define the bounds now here i am taking the number of nodes between 2 and 5 but you can explore anything between 2 200 or 200 whatever you feel but uh, that will take as you increase the bound it might take a little bit more time to converge so and our objective is not to come up with the best optimal function but I'm just trying to demonstrate to you the how to implement the Bayesian optimization and discover the optimal architecture of deep neural network so a deep fit forward neural network so just I have taken this smaller bound but you can always explore these bigger bounds uh, 2 5 2 5 2 5 for each of the four layers 2 2 5 these are the values that will explore it will run the Bayesian optimization and then sample loss is this particular sample loss function we for the neural network NN that I'm going to provide and this bounds the pre-sample it's again state we take with 10 and the random search is 1 NP random dot seed is equal to I'm going to give seed 10 you can take some other value also but if you don't but taking a the seed values is extremely important if you don't give that then every time you will run the same Bayesian optimization will throw different different results and your result will not be reproducible at all and so my strong suggestion you must use a random seed so that your results are reproducible and not only by you also by the people if anybody wants to reproduce your result you should be provide them the seed value so I'm going to run that again so it turns out to be it is 4244 is the size so initial so I am here giving the size of so best classifier any the best classifier best hidden best architecture of deep network is 4244 and I'm going to run this thing and then the, this is the best fit that we are going to fit and then this is the in sample and an out of sample classifier results that we are going to print so let us run this and turns out in sample is 71.57 and out of sample is 66.33 the results are not very different from the support vector machines the out of sample classifier but remember that it's a very small sample for running a successful neural network models so but in this video my objective is to give a demonstration of how you can use Bayesian optimization to discover the best architecture for neural network or deep neural network so now you know how to discover the best architecture of the deep learning neural network so you go ahead and try to implement the deep learning neural network for any model that you want for like on a data set like MNIST fashion data set or power consumption data set or any big data set on which you want to learn or want to run the deep network and do predictions and do wonderful things thank you very much wish you a happy Durga Puja and wish you a happy Navaratri and Vijayadashini
Thank you very much.